All right, so with that lecture out of the way on Terraform, let's take a look at Terraform in action. And to begin with, I'm here in Visual Studio Code and I've actually already got a fully complete environment that I'm going to deploy using Terraform. So I'm not gonna go through all the code yet, but you are gonna build upon this as the course begins. You know, the very beginning of this is resource group creation. We go down, we set up a network, we set up a main subnet, a network interface, an IP configuration, a virtual machine, a bunch of disk information, OS profile, some tags on the objects. And in addition, I've also got a DB code Terraform file which is actually going to set up a PaaS Azure SQL service as well. So the point of the demonstration here is to show you just how quickly using Terraform we can apply all of this configuration. If I go over to Azure, you'll see that I've just got an empty Azure environment. I've got a few resource groups in there from other environments, but there's no resource group called Terraform yet or Skyline's Terraform. You'll see those created as things uh, progress here. But the goal right now is it's a pretty empty Azure subscription I've got here for these demonstrations. And I'm going to go back over to Visual Studio Code. And what you'll notice on the bottom of Visual Studio Code, which we will install in the subsequent module, but I'll just scroll this up for the moment. I can go ahead and do my PowerShell commands directly down here. So I can do my Terraform plan if I wanted to directly in the console yet. Yeah, it is very difficult to see though. This is where I encourage you to do it as you're working in the environment, but I'm going to do it just for the purposes of the course in PowerShell window directly. So I'm in the same folder and I'm basically doing a Terraform plan right now. And this is going to tell me all the things it's going to do in the environment, which I can scroll up and see, okay, it's going to add eight resources, you know, between the VM, the subnet, the SQL server, etc. Uh, and so I'm going to scroll back down and simply hit Terraform Apply. It'll ask me if I want to go ahead after typing yes for that and hit enter. And that will now begin creating those resources in parallel because there's no strict dependencies on them. If I go over to Azure and hit refresh, you can already see we have a Skylines Terraform resource group created. If I go in there, you'll see resources already starting to populate. So we've got the virtual network already created. And if I refresh, you can already start to see network interfaces coming online. And if I go back over to my PowerShell window, over time, you'll see these various resources create and Terraform will tell you when it is completed. So we will fast forward at this point just to get through the sitting here watching paint dry and be back once it's completed. Okay, and as you can see, that's all completed now. So eight resources were added. Let's head over to Azure, refresh our resource group, and we can see we've got our network interface, our virtual network, our SQL Server, our disk, our VM, and there are additional resources that are inside there. If we go into the virtual network as an example, you know, you might be asking why are there only five resources when Terraform says eight. Well, there's other things like address space, subnets that get created inside there. So you can see two subnets were created. Those are additional resources as far as Terraform sees it when it creates. So it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one mapping. It's the resources Terraform creates in Azure, not necessarily just the resources in your resource group. But going back to the resource group, essentially you can see it all there. It's created the networking, the interface, the VM, the database, all of the infrastructure. And I could go with multiple services throughout Azure and just continually create, and again, even services in other environments as well. So that's one of the restrictive features of ARM is that it is just focused on Azure, whereas Terraform, if I don't just want a service in Azure, I want it in another environment as well as Azure, I can use Terraform, not to mention Terraform is just a first class citizen now in the Microsoft world. So whenever they release a new ARM provider, they are working with HashiCorp to release and update the new Terraform providers as well. Well, with that, the last thing I will do is just show you how easy it is to destroy all of those resources. If I go back over to PowerShell and I do a Terraform destroy, It'll tell me what's going to be destroyed. I type in yes, and it begins destroying those objects inside of the resource group, which is a lot easier 
than going through the console manually and trying to, you know, clean up after yourself. Terraform just makes that so much easier. With that, that concludes this demonstration, and we'll see you in the next module.